हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अ लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट माई सेल्फ आदित्य पी त्रिपाठी आई एम वंस अगेन हेयर विद यू टू कंटिन्यू आर डिस्कशन ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ वैल्यूशन ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज दिस इज गोइंग टू बी पार्ट फोर ऑफ आर डिस्कशन ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ वैल्यूशन ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑफ माइंड आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट द डिफरेंट थियोरम्स रिलेटेड टू आर बॉन्ड वैल्यूएशन एंड देन वी ऑल्सो ट्राई टू यू नो इवेल्युएट वेदर दो थियोरम्स होल्ड ट्रू और नॉट in today's lecture of mine i'll be continuing my discussion on the topic of valuation of deep discount bonds then we'll talk about how to calculate the value of uh, preference shares and eventually we'll talk about the valuation of equity share which is regarded as as the most comprehensive and difficult aspect of this computation of valuation of security although it is not that difficult i'm assuring you it is going to be a very you know easy topic in terms of understanding provided you understand the basics of valuation of equity shares which i'll be explaining you in great detail so with this agenda of today's uh, lecture let's start with the topic of deep discount bonds now the term itself is telling you about the deep discount bonds deep means the the value is supposed to be the discount is supposed to be the greater the magnitude of discount is supposed to be greater that's why we are giving it a nomenclature of deep discount bonds a deep discount bond if i have to explain or define it i would say that a deep discount bond is a bond which sells at a significantly lesser value than the par value so whatever the par value is suppose if i give you one instance the par value of a bond is suppose 6000 rupees and uh, you know it is going to be sold out to you at say 1000 rupees so you would say or you can draw an inference that discount is very deep the magnitude of discount is very high cause the par value is 6000 which is something which i am going to receive at maturity and the company is asking me to pay only 1000 rupees so the extent of discount is going to be 5000 rupees which is very significant so that is why we call it deep discount bonds at times many a times you come across certain advertisements which actually you know uh, you know show it propagated as a deep discount bond as a marketing gimmick that you should buy that particular bond cause the extent of discount is very deep so the crux of the story is that the bond is selling at a significant amount of discount significant rate of discount that's why we call it deep discount bonds now the question comes how to calculate the value of this deep discount bond we have to first understand what is the nature of this particular bond ddbs or deep discount bonds they have a coupon rate significantly less than the prevailing rates of fixed income securities with a similar risk profile if you compare it with the with the similar risk profile obviously they are going to give you the greater return as compared to the other options available in the market where you can invest and make money but remember my dear students the risk profile need to be the same cause you understand you know in the pre in the previous lecture of mine when i was talking about the risk and return i told you that the greater the risk the greater is supposed to be the return so the return is actually positively or directly linked with the uh, you know risk if greater is the risk return is supposed to be higher otherwise nobody is going to take that much of risk so i am taking risk because the return rate of return is very high so we have to understand for the similar risk profile if a particular bond is giving me significant discount then only i would uh, say or i would agree that it is actually a deep discount bond so valuation of deep discount bond is actually similar to the valuation of ordinary bonds there is no such difference as in case of calculation of uh, normal bond the same is the process of deep discount bonds also so at times my students are getting confused that sir what is the you know uh, modus operandi of computing the value of deep discount bond my answer is it is almost the same when i say it is almost the same there is a slight difference the only difference which is here in case of deep discount bond is that you are going to receive the value maturity value once only so since ddb is generate only the future cash flow at the time of maturity you can very easily calculate the value of ddb that is deep discount bond it is supposed to be the present value of future cash flow so whatever amount i am supposed to receive at the time of maturity of my bond i need to simply calculate the present value of it and that is going to be the value of my ddb or what you call as deep discount bond so with the nomenclature only you are getting confused or you you assume you perceive that it it might be requiring you know a comprehensive process to calculate no you have to you know simply apply the same process which you have been applying for the computation of other bonds so there is no difference as such in case of valuation of ddbs except one difference that here unlike other bonds where you receive the interest also and the maturity also and you have to calculate the interest which is going to be a you know regular phenomenon where you receive the amount annually and the you know maturity amount which you receive once only 
you know unlike that here what you get we get only present value of future cash flow we get only one cash flow that is at the time of maturity and we have to calculate the present value of it so if if you have to show it or represent it with the help of formula the formula is uh, value of ddb is equal to future value divided by 1 plus i to the power n where the future value indicates about the future value of deep discount bond payable at maturity i stands for the rate of interest or you can say the you know rate at which this particular return is calculated and n stands for the life of ddb or deep discount bond let's let's understand it with a numerical problem a company named ddbi issued a deep discount bond for a maturity period of 10 years the maturity period of this particular deep discount bond issued by DDBI is 10 years having a par value of rupees 25,000. So, the par value of this particular bond is 25,000 time is uh, maturity period is 10 years and you have to find out the value of DDB given that the required rate of return on this particular investment is 15 percent. So, with this you know uh, information we have to calculate the present value of this particular deep discount bond we can very easily calculate future value is known to us 25,000 rupees that is my majority value rate of interest is 15 percent that is my expected rate of return divided by 1.152 life of or maturity period is 10 years so once we you know discounted the value becomes 6,175 which means that the present value of this particular bond which is regarded as deep discount bond of rupees 25,000 will, will be only 6,175. Now, you can very well examine the magnitude of uh, you know discount, the extent of discount, the disc amount which you are supposed to pay as on date is 6,175 whereas, the maturity value is going to be 25,000. So, 25,000 rupees is the maturity value and the payment which I am supposed to make here is 6,175. Now, the same question in the examination problem can be given from a different perspective that we provide you in place of asking you to calculate the present value of deep discount bond. We can give you all these information and, and ask a question to you that an investor is seeking your suggestion that what should be the maximum price which I should pay if my required rate of return is 15 percent for this particular bond and the answer is 6175. So, if I pay 6175 today then only after 10 years whatever amount I am going to receive it is going to fetch me a return of 15 percent. So, this is what is the computation of uh, you know deep discount bond this is the way we deal with the deep deep discount bond. Once we have understood about the calculation of deep discount bond the next step which comes to us is valuation of preference shares. You know preference shares are the second in line in terms of securities they are you know almost equal to uh, the debentures only or bonds only the only difference is that debentures are basically the loan which you are giving to the company whereas in case of preference shares you remain as uh, you know shareholder although not uh, you, you do not have that much of right just like equity shares but still you are a shareholder. So, preference shares the, as the you know prefix of preference is added uh, before the shares they are having preference with regard to two things one is the payment of dividend and the second is a repayment of capital over equity shares. So, they have the preference over the payment of dividend over the equity shares with regard to two aspects one is the payment of dividend and the other is repayment of capital over equity shares. So, this is this is what is the reason why we call it why we assign it a prefix or nomenclature of this preference shares. So, they are, pref they are having preference of getting the payment of dividend as well as a repayment of capital at the time of maturity. So, preference shares are considered as a hybrid security because it has a feature of both the bonds and the ownership of shares because the rate of you know dividend is already known to us just like in case of bonds, but the ownership of shares that is coming here. So, it is a kind of hybrid security which is there in, in the hands of shareholders or the investors. So, these features are actually affecting the valuation process of preference shares. So, preference shares can also be of two can can be of two types they can be calculated in terms of two aspects one is the irredeemable preference shares those which are not having any life any you know a specific period of maturity although as far as companies act is concerned in India we do not allow such kind of securities, but for the computation purpose we will be discussing irredeemable preference shares and redeemable preference shares. Redeemable preference shares when I say I mean or I, I wish to you know say that they are having some maturity period and after that maturity you have to pay off that particular preference shares from the company side. 
So, let us uh, try to understand how do we calculate the value of redeemable preference share capital. It is computed from the following equation. There are two aspects of my uh, you know preference capital here, one in terms of preference dividend, the other in terms of maturity value or redemption value because we are talking about the valuation of redeemable preference shares. So, preference dividend I will be receiving as a shareholder for every year whereas, the redemption value I will be receiving at the end. Both the values are to be discounted because I wish to calculate the present value of my redeemable preference shares. It is very simple. So, if I take the total life to be n and uh, uh, you know the the time the rate is given suppose whatever the rate of discounting is given. So, preference dividend I will be taking and I will be discounting it with a given rate that is 1 plus k p to the power t and redemption value will actually be discounted at the last year's value. So, in this particular formula the p the term p stands for value of preference shares p d is the preference dividend uh, per share per annum r v is the redemption value of preference share and k p is the required rate of return of the preference shares and n is obviously the maturity period so with this formula we can calculate the present value of my redeemable preference shares and it is having two aspects one is the preference dividend and the second is the redemption value and second, secondly, if I have to calculate the value of irredeemable preference share capital, it is very simple. The formula is preference dividend divided by K P that is whatever your required rate of return on preference share is that is indicated by K P and P D remains the same that is preference dividend and P 0 is value of preference share. It is quite simple to calculate just like in case of bonds you were taking interest here you take dividend and divided by whatever the rate of return is given and the resultant value will be your price of that particular share. So, in this way we have understood how to calculate the value of preference shares after understanding the different theorems related to bond valuation. My dear students, now it is time for us to calculate to understand the valuation of equity shares, the concept and valuation of it. Uh, remember, before I tell you about the different ways of calculating the you know value of equity, uh, you have to understand what are the different approaches to it. In case of valuation of equity shares, at times people ask you to calculate the intrinsic value. Remember, intrinsic, the term intrinsic indicates about the internal value of that particular equity. What is the internal value of my equity? Equity shares, we, if we, I have to explain it in, in a very simple words, uh, words, I would say equity shares represent the ownership position in the company because they are equity shareholders are the one who are the real owners of the company as far as the, the company's act is concerned. It prescribes that it is the equity shareholder who is the real owner of the company because they are basically the one who have invested their uh, you know capital you know as, as, as an owner into this particular company. They are entitled for dividends for the capital contributed by them whatever capital they have contributed in return to, to that, they are getting some dividend out of this particular investment. But remember, along with this particular right or you can say the authority, they have a residual claim on the income. After, after everything else is done, after every other payment is done, whatever is in residue, that is going to be their right. So, they have to understand it is just like you know the head of the family in case of any function when you organize you are the last one to, to have your dinner because you are the one who have to take care of all the guests to whom you have invited. Just like that you know just like a family function where the, the head of the family is actually taking the lead of ensuring that each and every uh, everyone's uh, you know interest is taken care of. Similarly, it is also expected from you as a real owner of the company that you have a residual claim on the income. Whatever is left in residue that is going to be your right after making payment to debenture holders as interest, preference shareholders as preference dividend, whatever is left to us that is known as your residual claim. And that I have already told you in the chapter of capital structure, we do not call it earning after tax, we call it nehate that is net income available to equity holders. So, after making payment to all other parties, whatever is in residue that is going to be the claim of your equity shareholders. And remember, the same is applicable in case of liquidation. Once the company goes into liquidation, the same is the case of your capital also that you are going to have a residual claim in assets in case of liquidation. So, once the company is going into liquidation, you are going to be the last one to get the proportional capital of yours, you know, from that particular company because you are the real owner of the company. 
Now, once we have understood that what exactly we have recalled what exactly is the very basic notion of this equity share capital, we can talk about the approaches of valuation of equity shares. Basically, there are uh, you know two approaches to valuation of equity one is dividend capitalization approach where we focus largely on dividend capitalizing the value of dividend whereas the second approach talks about the ratio approach where we are considering the different ratios for calculation of value of equity my dear students if you understand these two approaches it is quite easy for you to understand quite easy for you to calculate the value of equity whenever the problem comes. So, let us start with the dividend capitalization approach. In this particular approach, value of a share is computed as the discounted value of the cash flows associated with it. With it. So, whatever cash flow I am supposed to receive from this particular investment, I am going to calculate the present value or discounted value of it and that is going to be my approach into this uh, computation via dividend capitalization approach. Now, in this particular approach there can be different models one is single period valuation model and the second can be multi period valuation model when i say single period it means it is for one year only when i say multi period obviously it is more than once so that is going to be multi period valuation model within the multi period valuation model you can have dividend without any growth or zero growth you know a given rate of growth constant growth or varying growth rate of dividends so, we will be you know uh, explaining it one by one how to calculate the value of equity into these two approaches whereas in case of ratio approach what we do here financial ratios are used to compute the value of a share it can be based on the book value where we rely on to the balance sheet whatever the value is given we take the net worth and divide it by number of equity shares and say that this is going to be the intrinsic value of my equity share. It can be liquidation value at the time of liquidation if I am calculating the value then obviously I will be taking the net amount realized by the sale of all assets and will be calculating the liquidation value. Whereas, the third approach third ratio which I will be using into this approach is price earning ratio and there will be, will be focusing on the earnings as compared to the previous approach where we were using dividend approach. So, in place of dividend here we will be using the earnings. So, price earning ratio will be using. Now, let us start with the dividend capitalization approach and I will be first starting with a single period valuation model. My dear students mind it mind this particular term here single period valuation model when I say this it means that the period for this particular valuation will be one only the price of an equity share can be computed very easily price is equal to D1 we understand expected dividend. So, the definition of D1 remains the same as we discussed in the chapter of cost of equity that is D0 into 1 plus G to the power 1 plus P1 is basically the price divided by 1 plus cost of equity if we calculate the we get to know about the price of the share. So, P stands for the current market price here D1 stands for expected dividend P1 is the expected price of the share at the end of one year whatever you expect that is going to be the price and K is the required rate of return which I expect from my this particular investment. So, let us try to calculate it with the numerical problem Noops limited is expected to declare a dividend of rupees 3 remember they are saying it is expected to declare a dividend which means expected dividend is given rupees 3 per share and the price at the end of the year is expected to be rupees 48 and you have to compute the market price of the share if the required rate of return is 9 percent. So, in this question required rate of return is given the expected price is given the expected dividend is given we can very easily calculate the price of the share under single period valuation model. So, D1 plus P1 divided by 1 plus cost of equity. D1 is given in the question 3 rupees, P1 is given 48 rupees, 9 percent was the rate of return. If we discount the value, the price of my share, the value of my share becomes rupees 46.79. So, 46 rupees and 79 paisa is going to be the value of my equity share. My dear student, this it is this easy, you can very easily understand what we are doing. And, and if you relate it with the computation of cost of equity, you can very easily understand cause the same formula for cost of equity what we, we were using cost of equity is equal to D1 divided by PO plus G. Now, the same form with the same formula we are deriving the formula for price of the share. So, P0 is equal to D1 plus P1 divided by 1 plus cost of equity. Now, let us start with the multi period valuation model when I say multi period which means that period is going to be more than once. So, in this in this particular category we have different sub categories I will be starting with the first sub category where the price of an equity share will be calculated for infinite duration where you assume that 
the shares are not going to be redeemed. There is no time frame given that by what time you are going to redeem this particular equity shares cause the very basic basic notion of this particular security is that they are the real owners of the company and company says that company will carry on for, for uh, time unknown. So, we are not going to return your money, this is the capital which you have invested, the company belongs to you. So, it is you who is going to decide the fate of the company. So, with this basic notion of uh, you know the company's format, the price of an equity share for infinite duration in, in this situation what will happen? You will keep on receiving a dividend for infinite duration. So, what we do? We take up the dividend for the series of dividend for different years and till infinite we discount the value of dividend and try to calculate the value of my equity share. So, if I show it with an equation, you can see that P0 is equal to D1 upon 1 plus Ke plus D2 divided by 1, 1 upon plus Ke to the power 2 and that will carry on till infinite, uh, you know, computation D infinite divided by 1 plus cost of equity infinite to the power infinite. Here, the P is the current market price of the equity share, D1 is the expected dividend, D2 is again expected dividend in the second year and cost of equity is the expected rate of return. The second situation which comes into multi period valuation is the price of an equity share with finite duration. Finite duration means you know that these shares are to be redeemed after certain period of time. So, just like you know uh, redeemable preference shares or, or debentures here also here in case of equity also you have a time frame. So, what we get? We get two components here, one is the dividend, second is the capital. So, rest of the process remains the same just like for infinite duration d1 upon 1 plus ke to the power 1, 2, 3 because the period, period is known here and then we have to take the, the maturity value and that is also supposed to be discounted. So, multi period valuation for now in this particular category you can have multi period valuation for constant dividends if I have to calculate the price becomes d divided by cost of equity. So, whatever cost of equity is that is expected rate of return if we divide it we come to know about the price multi period valuation for constant dividend. So, we have to understand in case of multi period you have equity share with finite duration, infinite duration at constant rate or zero growth rate of dividend or varying growth rate of dividend this is what you can have. The second category into this particular valuation of multi period valuation it becomes with uh, it comes with the constant growth in dividend it is very simple price here is equal to uh, expected dividend divided by cost of equity minus growth rate and we know that D1 is actually D0 into 1 plus G to the power 1 cause we compounded by the dividend of 1 year to arrive at expected dividend. So, if there is no multi period valuation with constant growth in dividend when the growth rate is constant then it is very simple cost of equity is, uh, is you know there and we deduct growth from cost of equity to arrive at this particular valuation. But the calculation becomes a little complex when we have multi period valuation for variable growth in dividend. It is not very difficult, you have to understand what we do into this. Now, we will be actually computing the value of uh, you know the, the dividend, the present value of dividend at varying growth rate in dividend. So, whatever the growth rate is accordingly we will be you know discounting the value of this particular dividend which I am going to receive in years to come. So, if I show it with the fu functional formula dt I am taking 1 plus ke to the power t plus d into n1 why I am multiplying it by n1 n plus 1 cause that that amount is suppose the moment your growth rate is going to change you have to freeze that particular amount which you have received and then it is going to be invested at a different rate of growth and ultimately we have to discount all the values. So, the first part of the formula is indicating about the present value of dividend stream at super normal growth rate. Suppose if question is giving me a super normal growth rate where the growth rate will be very high as compared to normal situation and the other situation where the growth rate is going to be at normal rate and the second part is indicating about the present value of share at the end of super normal growth period. So, with these two you know uh, assertions here, we, with these two components here, we can very easily calculate the value of an equity share for multi, under multi period valuation for variable growth rate in dividend. Suppose, uh, we have to solve a question. So, let us understand whatever uh, you know uh, in terms of formula we have understood in case of problem for multi period valuation. In case of constant dividend that is no growth rate in dividend. There is a company called LK Fertilizers and it is expected to declare a constant dividend of rupees 6. The rate of capitalization for the, for the company is 8 percent. What is the intrinsic price of the share? 
Now, we have we can easily calculate here the intrinsic price of the share cause there is no growth rate in dividend. We will be taking D and K E and easily calculate the price of the share. Expected dividend is rupees 6, the expected rate of return is 8 percent. If we divide it, we get the value of rupees 75. So, when there is no growth rate in dividend, no growth in dividend, it is quite easy for us to calculate. So, easily we can uh, understand what we have done. But what if there is a constant growth rate in dividend? There is a company called LK Constructions Limited and it is expected to declare a dividend of rupees 4.50 a year hence, which means they are supposed to you know continue with 4.50. And it is this dividend is expected to grow at a rate of 5.9 percent per annum. You have to compute the intrinsic value of share if the rate of return for the company is 9 percent. My dear students, mind here the dividend is growing here, but the rate of growth remains the same that is 5.9 percent. So, let us solve it very simple the formula I already told you D1 divided by cost of equity minus G expected dividend is 4.5 rupees cost of equity was 9 percent and G is 0 0.059 that is 5.9 percent if I convert it in terms of uh, uh, you know decimal value it comes to be 0 0.059 and the price becomes rupees 145.16. So, when the growth rate in dividend is, is constant this is the way we calculate the value of equity share. Now, the last option here is multi period valuation in case of variable growth rate in dividends. The super normal growth rate for a company, suppose if a question is telling you that super normal growth rate for a company is 20 percent and the duration period of super normal growth is 4 years. The normal growth rate after this period is going to be 5 percent. Try to understand they are telling you that this 20 percent growth rate is supposed to continue for 4 years and you know following that what you will get? You will get a normal growth rate of 5 percent. The current dividend per share is rupees 4, you have to compute the intrinsic value of share if the required rate of return for the firm is 8 percent. My dear students here, the dividend, current dividend is given, expected dividend is not given. So, we will have to calculate D1 from this particular D0. Now, you can apply the formula. What is the role? We will have to first, what is the process? We will have to first calculate the value of dividend, the present value of dividend during the super normal growth rate period. So, 4 rupees is given and you understood that growth rate was 20 percent when once we compound, once we calculate the present value of it, the value after 4 years becomes 21 rupees and 21 paisa. This is the first step. At the second level what we do? We have to calculate the price of the share at the end of 4 years which is given by this particular computation. Now, we will be taking 4 rupees 1.20 to the power t into 1.05 because now the growth rate is going to be 5 percent and Again, now the denominator will be the same as we were doing in case of constant growth rate that is cost of equity minus G that is 8 percent minus 0 0.05 and this value leads us to a value of rupees 290.30. Now, if I have to calculate the discounted value of my this particular price that is 290.30 at 8 percent rate which is my expected rate of return it becomes 213 rupees and 38 pesa. So, this is going to be the discounted value of this price. And since I have to calculate the intrinsic value of the share, I will be taking the value of dividend during super normal growth rate and then the value of equity share at the normal growth rate. I will be aggregating both the values and th in this way I will be getting the value of my equity shares to be 234.59 rupees. In case of ratio approach, it is quite simple book value per share if I have to calculate, I will be taking net worth which means share capital plus reserve and surplus divided by number of outstanding shares and you can very easily calculate under ratio approach the book value per share. My dear student, this is known as the intrinsic value of share. If I have to calculate under ratio approach liquidation value per share, the formula is value realized from you know liquidation of all the assets of the firm minus amount to be paid to all creditors and uh, preference shares dividing it by number of uh, outstanding and equity shares and that will lead to the liquidation value per share. If I have to calculate pri under price earning approach quite simple it is expected profit after tax minus preference dividend divided by number of equity shares. So, in this way my dear students we have understood how to calculate the value of equity shares under dividend capitalization approach as well as the ratio approach. I hope you must have understood and enjoyed today's lecture of mine. Thank you so much.